Another local business keeping our pets safe and healthy is the White Bear Lake Animal Hospital. Summer months can be hard on our pets and to help make them a little easier, Dr. Stuart Dalton is here to tell us how we can protect them from the elements. Hi guys. Hi, thanks, Hi, for, thanks being for being, on being the back. Show. Absolutely, nice to see you guys again. So the last time we were on the show we were out at the beach and yep. it was summertime and we were yep. talking about uh, the heat and mm -hmm. so uh, tell us again which clinic you're So uh, I'm with. the owner of White Bear Animal Hospital. We're actually loaded, uh, located just a few blocks from here up on County Road E. Um, uh, we've been there for gosh almost 40 years. Um, okay. All right, well, let's just jump right in and sure. kind of talk a little bit about uh, the summer months and what are some of the biggest threats uh, to animals, pets? Sure. Well, I think, you know, the obvious one is, is heat. You know, we live in Minnesota and so we have cold winters, but we have plenty of warm summers as well. So, um, you know, protecting your pets from the heat is, is, is probably the primary thing. Um, I think people are pretty well informed these days about not leaving pets in cars for any length of time in the summertime. It, even in relatively comfortable um, uh, weather, a closed car, even in the shade, can heat up to dangerously high levels very quickly. And our pets aren't able to cool themselves as efficiently as we can. They don't sweat the same way um, and so um, I think some people ask well what temperature is it okay to leave a pet in and I say it's never okay I, I don't want to put a number out there that might be confusing I would just say it's never okay to leave a pet in a car during the summer um, so if, if you, you're gonna take them th then you know Make Somebody stays in the car or other or, yeah. stay in the car with the air conditioning on or something to keep them comfortable best thing would be to leave them at home and then as far as at home goes, um, you know, most pets spend a lot of time indoors. And so if you're comfortable indoors, they're probably gonna be comfortable as well as far as when you use the air conditioning and things like that. Uh, other times a concern would be if you have a pet that spends a lot of time outdoors. Some people do have dogs, especially that they keep outdoors in kennels and that's fine. Um, you just need to be really careful that they're adequately cared for. So the most important things would be to have plenty of shade available, plenty of fresh water that you change frequently, um, potentially even have having a, like a, a, a wading pool or something with, with clean water that they can cool off in if they need to. So um, just some of those sort of reasonable precautions as far as the heat, um, you know, you can go a long way to keep your pet safe. Right. Now, a lot of times in the summertime, people cut back their their pet's coat. They mm -hmm. shave them off a lot or, yep. you know, clip their hair mm -hmm. real short. Do you have to worry about um, that change in their temperature or if their it's, skin it's gets really, sunburned? It kind or? of depends on the breed. Dogs definitely can get sunburned. Most of them have heavy enough coats where that's not really a problem. Um, some breeds it's appropriate to shave them down, others it's not. Um, that's something to you know speak with the groomers about and be careful about. But there definitely um, is value in, in some pets, especially dogs, again, in trimming their coats short or combing them out, helping them get rid of that old winter coat that they may not shed appropriately because they're indoors a lot of times. So, mm -hmm. um, so that can be helpful. I uh, just need to do it, you know, cautiously. I just recently heard about uh, potentially putting some sort of sunscreen on pets. Is that something that people do? Or? It's not. I can't say that it's something that's routinely done. A lot of the sunscreens that we use have zinc in them, zinc oxide and some of those things. And if anybody knows about dogs, they lick a lot. And so zinc can be quite toxic to pets, to dogs. Okay. And so you got to be really careful about using those kind of things. And in general, I don't know and at least in my experience and my practice, they're not a really a very practical option. And in okay. most cases, I don't know that they're really necessary. So don't do it. I, <laughs> Keep point, find a point, shady spot. We don't, we don't routinely recommend it. Okay. okay. Now we're standing on asphalt. Yes, and it's it hot. I can actually feel it through my <laughs> yeah, shoes. Yeah. 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 Do you yeah. have many uh, clients that are being treated for pad You know, injuries? you see it every now and then. Um, a lot of people like to exercise and run with their pets, which is great as long as they're adequately conditioned for that. What I would tell you about the pavement is that it's, um, um, you have to be really careful. Either it makes sense to run in the early morning or late evening hours when hopefully it's cooler and the pavement's cooler. Mm -hmm. um, I would say if you can put your hand on the pavement for several seconds and be comfortable, your pets, your dog should be fine. Otherwise, running on places where they can run on, on dirt or grass is a, is a really good alternative. Some of the, a lot of the trails run here have a, a dirt or grass alternative right next to them. So even if you run on the pavement, your dog could run on the grass or, mm -hmm. or, or, or or sand or whatever and that can that can make a lot of sense um, but yeah that you can get third degree burns pretty easily mm. off of the pavement is there anything to do to treat the pads of their foot normally you're going to treat it like a burn you're going to protect it make sure that you, you, don't, you don't get an infection or something like that but um, you know as far as wearing 
preventing it wearing boots and things like that. I suppose that's an option. You're going to get the feet are going to get hot just in the boots. We recommend boots in the winter time to protect from the cold. Mm -hmm. I think in the summer when it's hot, the boots may not be the best option, quite honestly. So what would avoiding, be a sign that it's starting to maybe get infected um, on their paws? Well, I mean, infections usually associated with redness and swelling and pain that can be associated with just a, a burn or just, you know, more severe inflammation kind of a thing. But mm -hmm. um, normally the dogs are going to be very, because it's usually going to affect more than one foot, so they're going to be very tender-footed, very reluctant to move and walk and those kind of things. And so, yeah, if you're concerned about it, it's definitely worth having a check. So real quick, uh, what are the things in the summer that uh, we need to do for our pets, protecting fleas mm -hmm. and what other types Ticks of yeah. things? Yeah, so, um, so parasites are really important. Summer is a um, great time of year for parasites. So the, the big ones we worry about are the parasites on the outside of the dog. So um, fleas and ticks, and we have some great options to prevent those parasites, both topical, chewable, and some collars that can work really well, so depending on the needs and choices of the family, there's some great options. Um, heartworm uh, disease is a blood parasite that actually comes from mosquitoes. Um, we have our share of mosquitoes around here. So we have uh, um, good options for monthly um, heartworm prevention, both chewable and topical. And we actually recommend using those products year round because they help prevent um, um, development of immature heartworms during the winter months. They also can help prevent intestinal parasites. So the parasites on the uh, on the inside of the of the pets are important to prevent as well. So, mm -hmm. um, so there's a number of things that could that be very effective and, and fairly simple to use. Yeah. And check with your vet, I'm guessing, yeah. about what yeah, to do. Yeah, you need to use the appropriate product. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Very much thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks.